was really uh, it was really a labor of love. We burnt the midnight oil many times doing it, and uh, it was just about constructing, you know, taking the time and constructing songs that we really dug. You know, we really dug them, and I think. Uh, that's kind of what kept us up all night. You know, uh, Danny would come over to my house on Friday nights with a case of Corona, and we'd start working at about 10 o'clock, 10.30 at night after we've caught up from our week, and uh, we'd work till 5, 6 a.m. in the morning. It was really interesting, too, because uh, at the time, uh, I had no children, and my wife was pregnant while we were writing some of these songs. And now that the album's come out, I've ha- I, have, I have two kids. Um, so it just gives you an idea of how long it took us to make the record. <laughs> songs that we we initially wanted to put on the album they didn't make it it's because it's not because we didn't try you know we we really worked hard on on all the songs we went into the studio and some some unfortunately had to get cut and it's because they just didn't work and will they appear in another album uh we'll most likely try again you know uh and if it works great and if it don't it don't you know and with that said like there's some songs on the album uh, the ones that made the album like uh, i'll take the one that plays on the radio uh, ride, um, which is the first single. I th- might be mistaking, but I think we've recorded Ride just in the real recording studio when we finally did the final cut three or four times. When you're writing a song and you've got an, uh, uh, you've got a vision of what your song is and what kind of feeling it gives you, um, you you can record it. You can play all the right notes and it can be tight. But sometimes you just listen back to it and go, you know what? It's it's right. It's tight. It sounds good but it just isn't doing what I thought it was going to do to me here, you know? So that's why some of the songs were done over and over till they gave us that feeling that we were looking for out of that, out of that tune. Marketing it has been has been really important, and of course Dan over here is a marketing genius, so that certainly doesn't uh, it doesn't hurt the situation. It, it sort of allows people that have followed us over the years to keep track of what we're doing and to know, so everybody's kind of interested. MySpace has been a great networking tool for the band. When we started MySpace page, I think it was uh, a year ago in December. Uh, since then, we've had uh, over thirty thousand plays on the on the on the MySpace page site. Uh, We've gotten numerous contacts. Paris Records found us through there. Um, lots of radio stations found us through there. I think it's a great tool. Uh, I think I think if a lot of bands today, they have a hard time. I know websites are very expensive, and and MySpace is a great tool because it's free and you can basically put anything you want on on MySpace page. You can put music, you can put video. So uh, I think it's it's the wave of the future. Uh, for artists and I'm going way off tangent because I'm not making any sense about the question at all. Something from the Tracy Star record, it's something called 401. (laughs) 